Hello there and welcome to the third and final part of our curved TV wall mini series. And in this part we're gonna set up the lighting and the camera first and then start UV unwrapping and texturing our parts. And finally we're gonna decorate our scene a little, give it some life and then get ready for rendering. So this is where we left off last part and I just noticed that we never even named the coffee table. Even though I keep preaching staying organized. And in this case, I just didn't do it myself. All right. So first, let's get an HDRI into our scene to bring some light in. So I'm going to open up a shader editor down here and switch over to world. I'm going to hit period on my number pad to zoom in. I don't need the side here. Just going to turn on screencast keys quickly. And out of the color socket, I'm going to drag out a noodle and look for environment texture. And then with that select, I'm going to press Control T to bring up a mapping and texture coordinate node. And so I'm going to open my HDRI folder and I downloaded the Red Hill Cloudy from polyhaven.com. So this is what I'm going to bring in here. And then I'm going to switch over to viewport shading render preview. And I'm going to bring back the ceiling. and Maybe even the wall on the back. And I want to rotate my HDRI a bit so I have the light coming from the angle that I want. And when I tried it the first time, it turned out to be a good value about 185. And I just got to bring up the strength to something around 8 where I like it. And I can adjust it later on once everything is textured. But by the time we get some textures in there, it's going to darken up a lot, so it won't be that overexposed anymore. Right now, everything is white, and that's why everything looks like crazy bright. All right. Bring back the object mode for the shader view. And I'm going to go into material preview here. And I'm going to switch the viewport shading to the interior HDRI. I'm also going to get my ceiling and my back wall out of the way again. And I'm going to start with the back wall for the TV wall. And first thing I want to do is apply the mirror modifier. Because right now the geometry is broken up in the middle and then just mirrored over. And that will mean that the texture will be mirrored at that point too. And that won't look good. So I'm going to go over to the modifiers and just hover over the mirror modifier and control A to apply it. And now I can go into edge select mode. First I take the middle one out. Alt select it and control X to dissolve. I'm going to go up here and select, select sharp edges. Because in terms of UV unwrapping, it's a little easier than some character model or some complex, uh, like a robotic model or whatever hard surface, where we have to be careful where we put the seams. Here, we treat it like we would actually do it in the workshop because that's what I do. So basically every 90 degree angle, every sharp edge would be a seam or a cut edge where we would either have end grain, but this is all going to be plywood. So it's going to be uh, edge banding. So basically every sharp edge we can use as a seam. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to right click and mark seam. I'm going to go into face select, select them all, hit U and click unwrap. And now it still looks like nothing because there's no texture on it yet. And I found a nice walnut texture on Blender Kit. And the trend these days is towards darker wood again. And walnut is one of the favorites there. So if you go on Blender Kit and search for walnut. And this one here, the walnut wood texture, that's the one I used for this project. And I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to do it again. I've saved it in my, my asset browser. I'm just going to load it in from there. And I'm going to go back into my shader editor because I want to do two changes to the texture. First and foremost, I want to make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to shift A at a hue saturation value node. I'm going to bring the value down to about 0.57 or something like that, just to make it a little darker. And then the other thing I want to do is, 
when working with wood in furniture, you always put some form of protective coating on it. So uh, it's either a varnish or an oil or a lacquer or something like that. So I want to add a coat. So I'm bringing the weight up to one. And right now it's very, very shiny. Um, I found a roughness value of 0.4 to be a nice satin sheen. So that's what I'm going for. And then it, it appears that here the bevel modifier is not really working. So I'm just going to open it up and on the geometry deselect clamp overlap. Doesn't seem to cause any issue. So now I'm going to select one face here on the main face. I'm going to shift G, select coplanar. And I'm going to hit U and unwrap that one more time. And that spreads it out evenly. I usually do a, a base unwrap and then I adjust the pieces the way I need it. And this way it just looks a little better. And I'm going to do the same thing with the edges. All select this loop, U and unwrap it one more time. Still a little washed out. So I'm going to switch over to UV editing. And I'm just going to scale these up a little. Just till it looks a little nicer. So that would be the typical typical grain pattern that you get on, uh, on edge banding. All right. Let's switch over to the sideboard. And first I want to apply the texture there too. So I'm going to select the sideboard. Shift select the back wall. And control L to link the materials. And then I can go into local view on the sideboard. And here's the same situation. So if I go into edit mode, because we mirrored everything over, it will be the same situation, especially on the top face here, which we see most prominently, that the texture would be mirrored over. So let's go back into object mode, hover over the mirror and apply it. So now we can go into edge select, take this one out, and we also don't need this one anymore that we used for the front. So control X to dissolve. And again, we're going to select sharp edges. Now we got to add a couple. So we got to think of how, how the plywood would be cut and how it would be put together. So that's where we need to add seams. So we're going to add these ones here. And then we would have this box made out of four pieces so top pieces and side pieces and i would have the top pieces go all the way through so i need a seam here and we have a similar situation on the sides of our model here and here i would have the top go through too because i don't want to have any edge visible up here so i'm going to select this one and this one the corresponding ones on the bottom and i'm going to do the same thing on this side where it's actually going to be visible. So with all these selected, I don't miss any. Uh, nope. No, that should be good. So right click, mark seam, select all the faces, U, and unwrap. Not select all the faces, U, unwrap. Okay, so now we have a basic unwrap, but there are a couple of issues. So let's go over to UV editing mode and switch over to local view there too. Deselect everything. And if we look at it now, we have a couple of issues here in, in terms of the grain directions. So these ones are fine going along the length of the model, but then we have a break here where all of a sudden the grain direction is perpendicular and that's bad practice. So in face select, we're just going to check all of them and select them. So it looks like from here, shift select all the way to no, control select all the way to here. And then shift select and control shift select. And just go around the model and see where it makes sense. You always want to have the, the veneer ideally go around and all facing the same direction, basically. So these ones are the wrong way. I'm just going to select all of these. 
One seemed to be fine. Control D, select those ones. I also don't want to use that one. So let's begin with these ones. So with these all selected, I'm just going to hit R90. And we're going to have the same issue here on the sides. So let's control select all these ones, rotate 90. And also the edges on the front, I'm just going to select one of them, shift G, select coplanar, U, unwrap them. And I'm going to scale them up a little. Just so the grain pattern is a little less washed out. And it looks like I missed a seam here. There we go. Mark seam. That's where I missed them. I missed these two. So let's do that one more time. Shift G, select coplanar, U, unwrap. I'm just going to scale them up a little. So now we have a consistent grain pattern. The only thing I want to still do is on the top here. I would, if I were to produce this, choose a nice position for it. So a nice, that I have a nice grain pattern right in the center of the face. So I'm just going to select all these faces, hit U and unwrap one more time. And I'm going to move it till I have something that I like right in down the center. And I like this pattern. I'm going to choose that to be right down the center. That looks nice. Out of local view and let's move on to the tower and select the tower select the back wall control l link the materials and then we can go into local view edge select let's get rid of these ones here we don't need those anymore they would just help us to create the front and it's the same process over and over again select select sharp edges and then we choose where we want the sides to come through. So that would be here. So we shift select this one and this one and make sure we get these ones this time. Bottom is not necessarily needed in this case. We won't see it, but let's just do it anyway. So right click, mark seam, face select all, unwrap. And here we have similar issues. So back to UV editing space. Sure, we only have the tower selected. Go into local view and face select. So we want to have the back wall all vertical. So let's do that first. Select one, shift G, coplanar, rotate 90. Or you could even just unwrap it again and rotate 90 if you want to have a little broader grain pattern. And then we have another situation down here where the grain pattern is inconsistent. So we're going to select all these here, rotate 90, top one looks good, and the side on this one, and just select the sides one more time, you unwrap them, and then for this one, choose a nice pair, maybe switch it up a little and have not the same one going there. So I'm going to move this over to... Mm, something like this. One more thing on this, the TV wall is the base. Select it, shift select another object, control L to link the materials. And then we're gonna select the sharp edges and just add what we need. Just like we've done a bunch of times now. Mark seam all. You unwrap, and I'm just gonna scale them up. Wonderful. Now the last thing that gets a wood texture is the outside of the coffee table. I'm gonna select the coffee table, select the back wall, control L, link the materials. And then I'm not gonna worry about the middle right now that it's gonna get a beige color. So we'll leave that for now. And I'm noticing one little edge that we should fix first. So let's focus on that. Select these two and we'll have the same thing probably on the other side. Mm -hmm. And let's just 
GG that or GZ so it's a little nicer. Okay, and here's the same situation as before. You see how it's mirrored here. Although in this case it doesn't look too bad, I guess. I guess in case of the co coffee table, things are a little different anyway, so I'm just gonna leave it there. So I'll go to edge select. Otherwise we don't have the option here for selecting the sharp edges and mark them as a seam. There we go. Face all you unwrap. Ah, I didn't catch the, you gotta catch the edge loop though in the middle where it's mirrored, otherwise it won't work. So let's all select those ones too and mark them as a seam too and unwrap it one more time. Oh, not very nice. All right, let's fix some of the issues in here and just unwrap it individual. Select this one here, you unwrap. I'm going to go into local view and select one on each side and shift G coplanar, you unwrap. I'm not worrying about these. I'm just gonna unwrap all these faces individually. So you unwrap see where the uv editing takes us here let's select everything and rotate it because we're mirrored in the middle i want this to be vertical mm -hmm. i'm just gonna stay in the uv editing and circle select all of the faces here you unwrap and i'm gonna select everything and rotate it by 90 to give it a little different design. Yeah, actually the mirror works here. Um, but I think I want to move it a little. I'm going to have it split right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Wonderful. And just like that, we have everything unwrapped that we need to unwrap. Now let's stay with our coffee table here for a second. Go back into edit mode you can go into vertex select here and just hit alt h to bring everything back and now i'm going to switch over here to material add a new slot and assign and now we can go into that slot and make a new material here i'm going to call it beige lacquer and give it a nice creamy beige color I'm just going to put in the hex value that I had in rehearsal. So it's going to be F4E4C8. And that worked out great. And I'm going to give it a roughness of about 2.4 or something. So we have a nice little bit of reflection on it. And now we can just select one of the fronts here and give it the beige lacquer. And I'm going to select all the other fronts, one of those, and Control L, link the materials. Now we just got to fill in the glass material here on the front. So with all these selected, I'm going to add another material slot and assign that. I'm going to hit a new material and call it glass. And in there, I'm going to get rid of the principal BSDF. I'm going to add a glass BSDF and a transparent BSDF along with a mix shader and plug that in. Let's go into cycles so we actually see it. And I'm also going to bring in a Fresnel node and use that as the mix factor. So the Fresnel node de defines at which glancing angle we get how much reflection. And now we just got to bring the IOR value to 1.45 for glass. And that makes it physically correct. And now we can just link the materials. So they're all there. Select each one of them. The faces are still selected from when we worked on them last time. And then just assign. And there we go. Now let's switch to the walls, make a new material there and call it walls. 
I want to give it a eh, like a minty and a greenish tone, which is trendy right now. Something like that. Let's bring the ceiling back. Oh, that's a little, little very green. Let's bring back the saturation to about 0.2 or something. Maybe a little more. You bring it down, bring it up to 0.25. And let's just bring back the other two walls quickly. Select them all. Select our green wall. Control L, link the materials. This might still be a little too saturated. We'll see at the end when we get the final lighting set up. Um, for the floor, personally, I use iMesh for flooring because they have nice geometry nodes based flooring, which just works great in Arquis. But any flooring texture, wood planks, or whatever you like works fine here. Just be creative about it. So I'm just going to bring that in quickly. Nice, brighter floor. Bring this over here. And now I just want to create a material for the baseboards. So I call it baseboards. And I'm going to keep it at white and just give it a roughness about point, just under 0.4. Just a satin sheen on them. And I'm going to give the door the same thing, just to have it even. Okay, so that's basically all the materials. Now I want to add some lighting inside these three cabinets and in that little box here. So I'm going to get my front out of the way on the tower. I'm going to go face select and bring my cursor to that face with shift S. I'm going to stay in the TV wall collection. I'm going to shift A, add a cube. I'm going to make a height of six millimeters and a width of about 10 millimeters and a length of 300. Well, let's make it 350. Bring it down into the cabinet. I'm going to apply my scale and tap into edge select mode. These end edges, I'm going to scale them along the X axis a little. And I'm going to select these two and scale them on the Y. Give it a little chamfer. I'm going to face select here, inset it ever so slightly, and extrude it up. Now I'm going to give it a bevel modifier for 0.3 millimeters, four segments. Shade it smooth. Clear sharp because I actually accidentally uh, used a Shade smooth by angle here, which adds sharp edges. One of the big complaints about 4.1. So I'm going to clear sharp. I'm going to make a new material on there. Just a basic metal material. Nothing fancy. You're not going to see these very much. I'm just going to bring this down a little. Material preview. Just a basic material, uh, just a basic metal material. And I'm going to select this face here, add a new material slot and assign that. I'm going to make a new material, which is just going to be an emission. And I'm going to give it a black body color. So I'm going to drag out the noodle and search for black body. I'm going to give it a temperature of 4500. And I'm going to control C that node because I'm going to bring my cursor to that face. And then in object mode, I'm going to shift a add a add an area light let's go into wireframe quickly here and set it to rectangle and scale it down so it fits right into that light it's a little smaller than that emission surface and i'm going to hit gz 0.5 minus so it sits below that face and i'm going to click on use nodes here and control V the black body in and plug that into the color. For the volume, give it only one watt. And then here in our collection, that cube, I'm going to call light strip. I'm going to take the area light and hold shift while I drag it onto the light strip and that parents it to it. So now I can select them both. I'm going to go in front view. 
and hit Alt D, bring it in there. And one more time, Alt D, bring it in there, GZ. And then one more time, I'm gonna do this in wireframe so I can see here. Alt D, I'm gonna bring it in here, just so it sits in the center there. GZ, snap it to the face, and there we go. Now we can bring the fronts back and go into cycles. And if we bring back the ceiling and the back wall now, we see that we have some nice lighting in there. And yes, the walls are still way too saturated. So let's bring the saturation down to about 1.5. Okay, time to set up a camera. So let's shift A, add a camera. And I'm gonna control alt numpad zero to bring the camera to my view. I'm also gonna add it to a new collection called render. And then here on the viewport display, I'm gonna bring the passepartout up all the way. So now I just need to find a nice position for the camera and a nice angle. So first thing I'm gonna do, because in photography, interior visualizations, you always wanna make sure that wall angles are perfectly plumb. So we achieve that by setting the X rotation to 90 and zeroing out the Y rotation. And then I'm gonna lock the X rotation. That way our walls are always perfectly plumb. And I'm also gonna bring the camera up to about high, height level of the average person. So the eye level would be about a meter 70. So the Z position, I'm gonna to bring to about meter 70. And then I can work with the Y shift to frame in my TV wall. I can also lock the camera to view and find a decent position. Lock the Z location here too. I'm gonna to bring the focal length to about 35, 36, 37, something like that works great for interiors in this case. And then we're just gonna frame it in a way we like. So that maybe the tower is in the left third of the whole image. Like if we bring in uh, our, where are they? Composition guides there, the thirds. So you can see here that uh, the tower is in the left third of it right now. And we have a bit of pretty much empty space in the right third, which is pretty good. I think that looks good for now. We can just leave it there right now. I'm um, just gonna bring, check the strength here. Let's see under color management, if we need to bring the exposure up a little. Yeah, I think something like that looks pretty good. I wanna make it a bright day, but also an overcast day. So the, day, so the light is very, very soft and very flat. Cool, let's make a quick save. So right now we don't have the right wall in, so let's bring that back and see what it looks like. It's a little dark. So either we bring up the strength of the HDRI a little up, which we can certainly do. And maybe we're under color management, we'll play with the exposure a little more. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Gives us a nice little shadow here. Shadows are important too. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. It's a little overexposed in this area, but that would be okay. So the only thing that is missing right now to this scene is some life, which is important to add decorations. Um, in this case, electronics would make sense for a TV wall. And without it, the whole scene just looks pretty empty. So here it's the question of your creativity. So bring in whatever decorations you feel the scene needs, some plants, some electronics, something that works behind the glass doors. So I'm just gonna add a carpet, some electronics, a little bit of decoration and some plants here. I grab most of them from iMesh, which is a paid service. They have some great free assets though. Blender Kit has a lot of that stuff too, especially electronics, you'll find a lot there. So give it a go, just plan whatever you, f you want in there. And I'm just gonna do the same quickly and then I'll be right back.
Great. And just like that, with some, some de decorations in there, it looks a whole lot different. It actually looks like people are living there and using the, the furniture. So this is what we're going to end up with with our scene. We have some nice reflections of the HDRI in the TV. That's why I dialed down the, uh, the roughness a little bit, just so it's not too clear. But it still gives some nice reflections and it looks like it is actually windows in there, even though there's nothing in there. So let's just set up our render settings here. I'm going to keep it pretty much at default. I'm going to activate the denoiser. I'm going to use the GPU light tree. I'm going to bring up the bounces to 12. Uh, light clamping. I don't want any light clamping. Mm -hmm. I don't need any depth of field either because it's an interior shot. I want to have all that in focus. Maybe I'll bring down the exposure just a hair more. Maybe up to two. Something like that. That looks pretty good. And then we can see in compositing if we need to do anything else. The output is good. 1920 by 1080. And save it as a PNG. We don't need an alpha channel. It should be good. So let's go into solid view again and give this a render. All right, there we are. Doesn't look bad at all. Needs a little compositing and adjustment. So let's pop over to our compositor. I'm going to close the sidebar here and I'm going to move this up a little so I have more room for my node tree. I usually do all my compositing in Affinity Photo. It just, first and foremost, the, 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 uh, the compositor in Blender is terribly sp slow and unresponsive. I hope it gets better in 4.2 when we finally get GPU support, but still there is a lot that the blender compositor cannot do or does differently i'm just used to doing it in a photo software but for the sake of this tutorial let's just do it so first and foremost let's add in a glare note set it to fog low high quality and we can actually bring it all the way up i'm going to bring the mix all the way to one so it's only going to show me what is actually glaring Let's preview that and let's play with the threshold. So we see a little bit more of the reflections. I don't want to have too much of it. A little bit like this is probably plenty good enough. So I'm going to add a mix color node, set it to add and plug that in there. And I'm gonna dial the mix value down to something 0 0.3, 0 0.4 is usually enough, just so it's a very subtle effect. Let's see if it does anything. Not too much, let's bring in a little more. Dum, 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 dum. There you can see it especially here on this one. So bring it back. There's a little bit, just a little bit of glow. And we, I really don't want too much of it. So next, let's uh, bring in a color balance node and see if we want to play with the gamma and gain a little. Just a hair, bring the gamma down to the warmer tones and the gain into a little bit of the colder tones, but not too much. Very subtle here too. Pretty much all I want to do. Let's bring a saturation node in here. See if we want to bring the saturation up a little. Maybe just a hair. That's all really. This is what I mean. It's so unresponsive. It you adjust the slider, nothing happens, nothing happens, and all of a sudden, boom. Let's do just a very tiny, tiny, tiny amount. 
and add a lens distortion node. Set it to 0.01 or 0.001 actually. Just a very tiny amount of lens distortion. It's such an interior close-up shot. We don't want to have too much. Let's see what the color ma management says if we bring the curves in. Maybe dial this down a little bit. Way too much. Start with a bit of an S curve and maybe bring the mid-tones up a little uh, that wasn't doesn't look too bad make a little more room here bring in an ellipse mask preview it make it way bigger and a blur note set it to fast gaussian relative and probably about 40 to 50 percent somewhere so we have a very subtle vignette effect come on react already and yeah, we see a very subtle effect so let's bring another another mix color node set it to overlay and bring that in way too strong Something around 0.2 should be plenty good enough. And last thing we need to do is add a little bit of film grain. So let's bring in a texture node and create a texture over here in the texture panel. Click on new, go on clouds and set the size to something like 0.01 or something. Very, very small. We can set it to uh, color and call this grain and then we can bring that up here and then for the scale on the x-axis we got to type in 1920 divided by 1080 to get our aspect ratio correct i'm going to bring in another mix color node in and bring the color in and that looks still very very large so let's Put it to 2.001 and then we can bring in a little more grain again come on blender too much 0.25 should be plenty enough for this scene so i'm gonna leave the compositor as it is now i'm gonna bring up the result again switch over to the viewer node Or is it viewer node? That looks like a nice result. All right, this concludes the three part mini series about how to create a trendy curved TV wall with some nice earthy tones. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something on the way. If you did, leave a comment and a like. And I wanna challenge you to make something out of it. Take what you've learned and apply it to your own design. And if you do that, link me up in Instagram or here on YouTube, post it in the comments. And I always like to see your work too. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.